Hi friends, welcome to another video on Tutorials Point with me Richa. And today in this aviation module, we are going to cover a very important part and that is understanding the different types of aircrafts and cabin crew training. Well friends, I am sure you must have wondered at some point or the other that why are there so many different kinds of aircrafts? Some are small, some are big, some are humongous. Some have a single aisle, some have a double aisle, some have one engine, some have twin engine. Well, the reason being that different aircrafts serve a different purpose altogether. And so today, in this module, we will understand the different kinds of aircrafts. Let's get started. The agenda today is to understand the different types of aircrafts, the mandatory trainings that every cabin crew member has to undergo. We will also talk about the flight attendant manual and the operation manual. Minimum crew requirement and the role function of each and every cabin crew member. So friends, let's have a quick overview of what are the different kinds of aircrafts. Well, here on the images you can see a single engine which has just one engine in the aircraft. There is a twin engine which means that there are two engines and that is for a particular purpose why twin engines are there. A sports plane which looks really nice and funky is for a one purpose only and that is for fun. These sports planes do not fly very high and they also do not go very long distance. So they are for very short distance and they fly very very low. We have turboprops which have a, you know propeller kind of a engine, not a jet engine but a propeller engine. A business jet which is a jet engine plane, a business jet is mostly used for business purposes only and they only accommodate VIPs and VVIPs. Well, the airline for personal use as well as the training can be high wing or low wing. Now some of the aircrafts have high wing which is above the, you know, the uh, way it has to be and a low wing which is on a lower platform. So, it can be a high wing or a low wing depending on where the wing is attached to the body of the airplane. If it is attached towards the higher side, it is a high wing airplane. If it is attached towards the lower part of the fuselage of the aircraft, it is a low wing airplane. Well, a sports plane can have a high wing as well as a low wing. It is also known as a biplane because it has two wings. One is positioned at a higher place and one is positioned at a lower place. Now, this particular aircraft that you see right here has a third wheel which is at the behind or rather below the tail of the aircraft. This has a third wheel in the back which is called a tail dragger. The reason being when the aircraft lands, this particular wheels help in dragging the aircraft for a certain distance of time. There are certain aircrafts which are known as retractables. Now, what are retractables? Let's see that. Retractables fly faster than the fixed gear airplanes, tucking the wheel inside between the takeoff and landing. Most of the time when the aircraft takes off, after takeoff the wings go in or rather the wheels of the aircraft go inside the aircraft. But in retractables, this does not happen. What is a float plane? A float plane is simply also known as a sea plane because it can land into water. And that is the purpose of it that it lands into water. So these land on water using pontoons or floats. Some also have wheels so that they can also land on runways. So they have a dual purpose. Float planes can land on the sea as well as on the land. Let's understand about sea planes. Now what are sea planes? Again similar to float planes. They put the fuselage in the water and with retractable wheels Amphibians also can use runways. So seaplanes and float planes are rather having the similar quality of landing into the water when they have the need to land into water and they can land onto the land also on a runway. Let's see what are twin engines. Now twin engine the purpose is uh, they have to go a longer distance. So it's important not to have only one engine but a dual engine so that it can take the aircraft for a longer distance. This is a twin engine airplane or a twin because it has two engines and two propellers. Friends, whenever there are two engines in an aircraft, there has to be two propellers and that goes together. What is a turboprop? 
Well, a turboprop's propeller is powered by a turbine or a jet engine. Smaller airplanes like cars use a piston engine. So that is the purpose why we have turboprops. So well friends, about turboprop, they are fast business airplanes, but they can still use smaller or even rougher runways. Coming to business jet, some of the business jets that are flying nowadays are even faster or many times even they fly higher than a regular airline. So that's a little brief about business aircrafts. Well friends, aircrafts are of two types. One is a narrow body aircraft and one is a wide body aircraft. Now let's understand the difference between these two. A narrow body jet aircraft has a diameter of 3 to 4 meters only. It has a single aisle and the seating arrangement is done in such a way that there are four or six seats. The largest narrow body aircraft can carry a maximum of 280 passengers. Some examples of a narrow body jet are Boeing 727, Boeing 737, Boeing 757 and Airbus A320. Let's come or uh, rather take a look at the wide body aircraft. So in the wide body jets, we have a larger airline with a fuselage diameter of about 6 meter. So while the narrow one had only 3 to 6, or uh, rather 3 to 4 meter, the wider body has about 6 meters and it is always a twin aisle can accommodate from 200 to 600 passengers. Let's take a look at the examples of wide body. We have Boeing 747, Boeing 767, Boeing 777 and Airbus A380. So that's a little brief about narrow and wide body aircraft. The configuration of the seating arrangement in, is done in a particular manner. The way seating is arranged within the aircraft, example, three seats, four seats and three seats or it can be just three by three, that is three seats on the left side and three seats on the right side of the aircraft. Normally, a narrow body jet with one aisle has two seats per row, that is three and three, left three side and the right side also has three seats. Now, this is commonly seen. Wide body jet has two aisles, normally it comes with three, four, three, that is three seats on the left, four seats in the middle and three seats towards the right side of the aircraft. Now friends, budget airlines are really cheap airlines which offer tickets at a very, very cheap price or a low price. So there are certain parameters for budget airlines. Let's look at them. Criteria is they don't really issue tickets, so there is no paper tickets given. They do not do connections flights, so there are only direct flights and no connecting flights. They have shorter check-in timings. They have only one class, which is economy class, so no first class and no business class. They sell directly to the public. Now, these budget airlines do not work via travel agencies or travel agents. They sell directly to the passengers. They do not have any free meals or any kind of entertainment. So that's a little brief about budget airlines. Domestically as well as internationally, there are lots and lots of budget airlines which work under these criteria. Now, under aircrafts, there are two main manufacturers. One is a Boeing and one is Airbus. We will now have an overview of Boeing and Airbus aircrafts. Let's first take a look at the Airbus. Well, the Airbus was founded in 1970 and it had the headquartered in France. Uh, so it started that early at that decade and it had its headquarters in France. Now, the Britishers have about 20% of the aircrafts, which are Airbus. France has 37.9%, Germany has 37.9% and Spain has only 4.2% of aircrafts, which are of Airbus. It was originally a marginal competitor and unlikely to really challenge US dominance. So Airbus, when it started, it was not really doing that well and it really did not have any competition as such. In 2000, Airbus made a transition from a consortium to a fully functional private aircraft. So it went from you know, being a, cons a consortium to a fully functional private entity. Taking a look at the Boeing. So the Boeing aircrafts also have specific requirements. It was founded in 1916 in Washington, D.C. and it has its headquarters in Chicago. 
Well, it is a leader in commercial and defense aircraft, defense satellites, as well as space systems. So Boeing is really not been only about commercial airline, but it has also gone into the aerospace as well. Acquired different several aerospace pioneers, example, McDowell, Douglas and Rockwell International. It is an ambitious 787 Dreamliner. Boeing 787 is a Dreamliner which is humongous and it's so huge that one looks at it, one just falls in love with this aircraft. It has composite material, fuel efficient and the program cost is $32 million and that's the cost of Boeing 787. Let's quickly look at the aircraft models which is for Airbus. Under Airbus, we have different aircraft types. Now, you must have never ever wondered that Airbus can have such huge models within itself. We have Airbus 300, which is a twin engine airline, rather a twin uh, aisle airline also. Airbus A320 is a twin engine, twin aisle and it's modifiable. Airbus 318 is two engines, single aisle and it's shortened, meaning it goes only short distances. Airbus 319 is twin engines, uh, again two engines, single aisle and shortened. Airbus A320 is two engines and it has only a single aisle. A321, that is A321 is two engines, single aisle and it's lengthened means it has a very large body. A330 is two engines and twin aisle. A340 has four engines and twin aisle. A350 is two in engines and twin aisle and A380 is four engines, it's a double-decker aircraft and it has a twin aisle. So this, among the Airbus A380 is the largest Airbus model which can be there. Coming to Boeing, let's look at them. So under the Boeing models, we have aircraft types, which is Boeing 737, which is a twin engine, single aisle, short to medium range, narrow body. Boeing 747 is again a heavy four engine, material or aircraft. 767 is a heavy twin engine, twin aisle, medium to long range, wide body. And Boeing 777, which is 777, has a very heavy twin engine and a twin aisle, medium to long range, or it even can go ultra long range. Last but not the least, the Dreamliner, which is Boeing 787, is a heavy Twin engine, twin aisle, and it only flies long distances. So that's a little brief about Airbus and Boeing models. So friends, after discussing the different types of aircrafts, now let's come to the different kind of trainings that a cabin crew member has to undergo. So let's take a look at them. She has to undergo an initial cabin crew training, a conversion training, recurrent training, refresher training and cabin crew instructor training. Each and every cabin crew member needs to undergo all of these trainings and we will now look at each one of them in a little detail. Coming to the first kind of training, initial training is the kind of training which every cabin crew member when she joins a particular airline has to undergo. Now this initial training can last from 45 days to 60 days at a stretch. A job of a flight attendant is not easy and it requires a really high degree of responsibility and specialization to ensure the safety and service of the passengers. Therefore, the cabin crew member who has to undergo the training needs to have a combination of theory as well as practical. So she needs to understand the modules which are there in the training really, really in depth. This initial course provides your flight attendants with the necessary finishing touches of safety and emergency procedures, the different equipments within an aircraft, crew resource management and other important factors which really influence a flight. So that was about initial training which every cabin crew member has to undergo. And this initial training differs from airline to airline. It depends on which airline you have got selected for. Coming to conversion training, now a cabin crew member has to fly different Airbuses or Boeing aircrafts which have different models. She might be flying an Airbus or a Boeing or even an ATR which is a propeller aircraft. To know the different type of aircrafts in detail, she has to undergo something known as a conversion training which makes the cabin crew familiar with that specific aircraft type, the safety systems, the service equipment and the usage of all these. 
It is also having related with different kind of standard emergency procedures for that particular type of aircraft. Well, a conversion training can happen for Airbus, the different aircraft or rather Airbus models, Boeing and the different Boeing models, ATR and the different ATR models, which is 42 and 72. That's a 42 seater and a 72 seater. Now, a training program of conversion training includes the following. She has to go undergo a SEP training. What is SEP? SEP is Safety Emergency Procedures Training. Introduction to the aircraft type and the different kind of systems of the aircraft. Aircraft familiarization with it. The doors of the aircraft, the different slides, the exit, etc. Passenger briefing, safety demonstration, the different kind of emergency drills, etc. So that's a conversion training which every cabin crew member needs to do in order to fly different kinds of aircrafts. Coming to recurrent training, well, what is recurrent training? Recurrent training course is designed to maintain the level of proficiency and refresh the knowledge of skills used by the air hostesses. So in order to make sure that each and every cabin crew member knows her things, is proficient enough, she has to go a recurrent training. Coming to cabin crew instructor training, well if you have a lot of flying experience and you want to retire from flying and you want to come to the on the ground for a job, you can become an instructor of cabin crew, meaning you can have a, you know, a particular type of aircraft or SEP instructor, you can become a crew resource manager instructor, you can become a safety and emergency procedure instructor training. So that really helps when you have a lot of knowledge to share and you can become a trainer in terms of having this kind of training, which is the cabin crew instructor training. A refresher training is to be undergone by a cabin crew when she has not flown for six months or even longer period of time. When she has a gap of six months or more, she has to undergo a refresher training and kind of understand the different modules and really prepare herself well, after which she even needs to take an examination to know that she's proficient and efficient enough to fly. So that's about refresher training. Well, friends, that was all that we had to tell you in terms of the different aircraft types and the different types of trainings a cabin crew member has to undergo. We sincerely hope you have enjoyed listening to this particular model as well as how much time we have really wanted to teach you this particular segment of aviation module. Keep listening, a lot of more videos coming your way. Thank you very much for watching us.